Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel, to Behind Enemy Lines. I'm here with my guy Cass, and if you don't know what the series is, this is where I, a Saints fan, uh, talk to a fan of the Saints opponents for the week. And this week, as you can see, he's pointing to the Tennessee Titans. So Saints are facing the Tennessee Titans in the final preseason game of 2024. And I finally have my first fan on for 2024. <laughs> you know, shout out to shout out no, to I, 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 don't, I don't know what you're talking about. My name is Caleb Allen, aka Caleb Allen. Yeah, 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 uh, shout out to Caleb, but it's finally time that we actually had a real fan of a team on. So, uh, how you doing, bro? Like I haven't been talking to you it's pretty it, much for the last few hours. See, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. You say, uh, it's time. We're glad we got a fan of uh another NFL team. It's not just Caleb. When, according to the national media, Titan fans don't exist. Yeah, we're not. We're not people. We're. Right. For a, a discultured swine, uh, if you're not a Chiefs or a Texans fan in the NFL, you're a discultured swine and you don't matter. Well, but, we have live footage of a Titans fan in, in, oh, live in the oh, flesh. Oh, they exist. <laughs> well, <laughs> the, rare, <laughs> the rare Titans fan, you know, we the got rare Titan, The rare Titans fan sighting. FBI, we got it. <laughs> I was about to send the FBI to his crib. All right, man. So, uh, starting off with training camp, how's training camp been for the Titans so far? Uh, training camp has been interesting because then you got you got your training camp warriors that are always every year coming up, like doing the best in training camp. Like, uh, we date back to his first year; he didn't do that great because he was adjusting to some different heat issues and some uh, body issues he had coming out of college. But even going back to last year, we heard all the news about how good Traylon was leading into this, to last season, and it didn't show anything. Well, mm -hmm. this year, we hear the same thing, and even to higher scale. And we're seeing all these clips of him, like, beating Seattle defenders. He's looking really good at training camp. I, myself, am not keeping myself too optimistic, but I do say this. If he could be a key piece to an offense that – if they add another receiver, that's four legit guys you could have, which makes that offense really dangerous. Then you got guys like uh, like Jalen Harrell, who even in actual preseason games has proved himself really good, as well as training camp. And I'm actually, I'm actually going to make a statement here that I'm going to make later on in this video. Um, I think Jalen Harrell is going to make himself not only onto the 53, he's going to make himself onto the day one starting roster. He's going to be mm -hmm. in the starting rotation. For what position? Receiver? Uh, no, defensive edge. He's the defensive edge. Oh, okay. He's the our seventh round rookie out of Michigan. And who's the who's the rotation there right now? Right now, he would be taken probably. He would be taken Weaver where Weaver plays right now okay. because he's he's been way better than Weaver. He had two sacks in the preseason game against. Uh, the 49ers, and then – I mean, not the 49ers, the team we played most recently. Give me a second. Played the Niners, and then we played Seattle. Seattle. Yeah, he had two sacks against Seattle, and then um, in practice like two days ago, he had uh, he had two sacks again. So mm. he's looking really good. So I'm excited to see him come out and actually play the Saints. Against an offensive line that you know all too well of struggles on that side. So, right tackle son? Yeah. Where he plays at. Jalen Harrell's going to have a fun day. Yeah, it really just depends on who's there. I think if uh, Trevor Penning's there, yeah, he'll have, a, he'll have a fun day just because I know Trevor Penning is not like any, any good, period. <laughs> like, and, he's um, struggled against. Two second team defenses. So, yeah. uh, one of the big things is like one of the things I'm loving to see from uh, like at least 
as far as like the defensive front goes, and even to the wide receivers too, is the Titans release like these uh, bench clips showing like how excited some of the players like that from some of the starters on the regular team are getting from these guys yeah. making preseason plays. Like, how excited Harold Landry, Jeffrey Simmons, and Arden Key get when Jalen Harrell makes a play when they see the potential this guy has as a mm-hmm. piece that can add on to their defensive rush unit. It, it's the same thing you see when you see a guy like Jarquez Jackson uh, who did really good for the the Titans in the game against Seattle. It's the same that you when you see that. You, you mean Jaquan Jackson? Jaquan Jackson, sorry. When you see, I'm, I'm still adjusting to some of the some of the rookies' names. First, Jaquan getting Jackson. him confused with an Auburn running back. <laughs> with Jaquan yeah. Jackson, uh, the way that guys like Calvin Ridley and Tyler Boyd are getting excited about uh, Jaquan is the same that you see from the defensive line getting excited about Jalen Harrell. Hmm. Yeah, I would say uh, it, training camp for the Saints is fairly similar. It's very interesting in terms of uh, position battles. And, you know, you think someone like Trevor Penning had the starting spot locked up. But as bad as he is, I've been saying uh, Ollie, Ollie Udo get reps of first, first team right tackle. And he's been doing apparently better than Penning has. So... I think the game this week will probably feature him at right tackle a little bit. And if he does, if he has a little bit more success than Penning does, I wouldn't be surprised if Dennis Allen has a decision to make uh, that week. Well, as, uh, far as, like, as far as like Dennis Allen, um, you really got to think he's going to try to make some sort of decision to get that right tackle position uh, kind of squared up. Because if he doesn't, yeah. Because if he doesn't, like, having that significant pressure brought off the edge with Penny going, he's going to set yeah. your offense up for, like, a fail situation. He's really not in the position to lose too many games this year if he's trying to keep uh-uh. the job. Yeah, not at all. Especially with the schedule they got early on. Like, yeah. they got a lot of, like, big-name pass rushers within the first seven weeks. And one thing, like, if Penning does get the start at right tackle, it limits what your offense can do because you're going to have to have to bring in tight ends for chip blocks, running back. Yeah. Play. Trust me, as a Titans fan that has struggled with tackle play, I know about the things you can do to limit your tackles, like, uh, effect on the game, like, to limit how bad they are. Like, trust me, I had Andre Dillard in the fucking – Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, you went from Daly. Dennis Daly to Andre Dillard, and that's not a big improvement. And, oh, it was a big improvement, but it, it just shows how bad Dennis Daly was. Um, like it limit because your running backs, like for example, the Titans are moving much more to like a running back being involved in the pass game. So if our tackle is going to impact the Titans significantly, for example, say if MPF doesn't make the jump that Callahan thinks he has, Bill Callahan, uh, our offensive line coach seems to think MPF has made that jump. That's why he's the starting right tackle now. Yeah. And he seems to think he's made that jump. But say he hasn't, or say J.C. Latham struggles, it's going to limit the Titans severely on what they can do running back out of the backfield-wise because of how of that extra two, three seconds that's going to take to chip the, the incoming rusher. Or, for example... We have two guys that can be danger. Well, technically three. We'll get to him. At, uh, we'll get to um, to Robinson in a minute. The UDFA tight end for the Titans that I'm going to talk mm-hmm. about. But we have two starting level tight ends that can be involved in the passing game. And if you're t- making them start off their routes by chipping somebody that limits what routes they can go into. And for example, uh Chickasai McConquo is so so much of a danger athletically that he can stretch field. Like he can yeah. he's a legit danger athletically. It limits what he can do route wise because he's having yeah. to use that time, especially for Wiley as well. Yeah, it is. 
that's that's the thing about Trevor Penning is that I know he's like every now and then I'll have a decent rep and you know it's actually like once in a blue moon that he has decent rep. So almost every rep I've seen from him this season so far has been terrible. And I've noticed in the first game, they kind of just let him, you know, on an island by himself trying to cover or trying to block against, I don't even know the guy's name for the Cardinals. And then uh, in San Francisco, in the San Francisco game, they gave him a lot of, a lot more chip opportunities, which led for a good drive, but a very boring drive. If if I say, if I had to say from every other Saints fan's perspective, that was that was a boring drive that ended in a touchdown. And I'm actually was, interested in how long certain starters will play in Week Three, um, of the preseason because. Like, yeah, I think it's the last preseason game, last chance to like stretch it, like where you get to a game, like games that actually matter. Yeah. So like, and besides like a drive or two, it's at least for the Titans. I don't know how it is with Saints. We haven't really seen. We've seen the starting unit here or there. We saw them a little bit in, against San Francisco in the first game, but I'd be interested to see how if any of the starters are going to get. Time like, are we going to see Will Levis? Will we see Tony Pollard? Calvin Ridley played some against San Francisco. Will we see him against the Saints? Stuff like that. Yeah, I think that it's like critical for teams like that are bringing in new offensive systems, like the Titans and the Saints are, to let the starters play for a quarter. Because or... even the the thing is, even if the Titans do let. Uh, even if the Titans do let them, the starters play, you're still not going to have DeAndre Hopkins because Hopkins, uh, although is going to be there for week one, Callahan saying it's most likely look like he's going to be ready to go week one against the, um, against the Bears. He uh, tweaked his knee earlier in training camp. Yeah. Like, but, play the guys that are healthy. But don't okay. miss the guys like DeAndre Hopkins and Arden Key and Tyler Boyd. People, yeah, and people who have like are dealing with a little bit of injury right now. But um Yeah. I'm kind of a bit excited too to finally get to see something from GW Woozie and Legarius Sneed because both of them haven't basically done anything all training camp. Like, they've been rehabbing stuff mm -hmm. from injuries last season. Yeah. So, we've seen very little of them. But Denard Wilson actually said that they are 100% expected to play week one against the Bears. But I don't know if that'll mean they are uh, going to play at all if the Saints, if the Titans did play starters against the Saints. I yeah, doubt. Yeah, you know, I think, I think they'll play um, – I mean, I don't know. I haven't heard anything on it yet, but I think the Saints will trot out the starting off starting offense and starting defense outside of the linebackers and corners. Uh or outside of uh Lattimore and Pete Warren and Demario. So it'll probably be Willie Gay, Anthony Orgy, and then Debo or uh Lattimore being the only three starters on defense not playing. And then Fuago will probably play. And then uh I guess sneeze, I'm trying to No fuck. Okay. Uh and Rashid probably won't play, but he hasn't played the entire preseason, so uh yeah, while we're on the topic of injuries, we're just gonna bring it up. I have uh each injury report on uh on file here. And then we're just gonna go over it. Does anything really stand out? Uh, on the Titans injury report, if you want to, you could pull it up yourself. But um, basically, um, I'm just going to go over the last week since um, since the last preseason game. So the Mason uh, injury happened in the preseason game? 
Yeah, so DeAndre Hopkins, Titans head coach Brian Callahan said Sunday that the team expects Hopkins to return in time for the regular season opener. Yeah. Uh, Kyle Phillips is unlikely to play in the in the Titans preseason for now. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, hamstring, that's what it says. See, it's injuries like that to guys like Kyle Phillips, Kyrus Jackson, even Jabari Small that could like heavily impact where they end up on the roster. Because we, yeah. we were talking about surprise cuts, like Mason Kinsey played through a broken finger in yeah. the Titans, Titans game. And people have arguably said he's looked better than Kyle Phillips this, this preseason. So, mm -hmm. like, and the ability he gives you at punt returner is very similar to the ability that a guy like Kyle Phillips would give you at punt returner. So why Phillips has been constantly banged up his entire career, it's really starting to interest you why you wouldn't go with Kinsey. Right. Uh, and then it says, Kyrus Jackson is questionable for Titans' last preseason game at New Orleans. Curious Jackson has a knee injury. Mm -hmm. Jabari Small uh, entered concussion protocol. Um, yes, yeah, so did Reese and Wiley. Yeah, Otis Reese and Josh Wiley also entered. And it said they could return to practice later in the week. So. Uh, and then it says Shadobi should be ready to play week one against the Bears. Uh, TK McGlinnard is expected to miss multiple weeks due to turf toe. Garrett Wallow is on IR, and then Arden Keys dealing with a minor hamstring injury that came uh, two days ago. So, is there anything there that really stands out to you? Or... Uh, besides, besides what I mentioned about, like, the, for example, Jabari Small was in a fight for running back three with Haskins and Chestnut. Uh, Kiaris had a great return week one against uh, San Francisco. I think had a genuine chance to try to make the roster as the league kickoff guy. Uh, but you don't like having injuries in the preseason when you're in these battles, it severely hurts what you're looking at. Yeah. So like, yeah, you can say that they could still make the team, but as far as for a guy like uh, Josh Wiley or even Otis Reese, for example, I feel like those guys already have positions kind of, field on the squad like i would be very surprised if a guy like otis reese gets cut because of how like how him and chance campbell have played in the interior this preseason mm -hmm. yeah because they've been the, they've been the starting inside linebackers um and then the flexibility reese gives you in coverage because of him being a former safety like his ability he can give you in coverage him and I, I've, I've said it like this Kenneth Murray and Jack Gibbons work together because of their different skill sets, right? Yeah. When Chance Campbell and Otis Reese are on the field, both former o uh, o Ole Miss guys, both at the same time, right? When right. they are on the field together, they, they work better off of each other. When you have an interior backer that can more dominantly play the run, isn't as great in pass coverage, then you have a guy that can play the run and is also good in pass coverage. You can kind of mix things up of how you handle it. And really that's what you want your inside backer room to be is guys that play well off of each other. So. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Now moving on. Got the Saints injury report here, starting from last preseason game. Um. Dan Holker's for his ankles, I believe. I've been – I'm a big believer in Dan Holker. I thought he was going to steal tight end one for the longest time just because Juwan Johnson was injured for uh, pretty much all of training camp. Uh, and I thought Dan Holker was pretty impressive with the twos. I thought he was going to be able to take the one spot. But um, now he's probably facing a little bit of an uphill battle to – make the roster. I think that he'll probably be tight end three uh, or four, technically, if you count Taysom. I don't even know where to put Taysom at in, uh, on the roster. Um, Kool-Aid, 
Kool-Aid avoided a serious injury in Sunday's preseason game against 49ers. Yeah, he made a tackle where he or he uh he shifted his body or I think he shifted his body and uh his knee kind of like bent in a way that it shouldn't. But uh he's probably gonna be sidelined for just a little bit. Uh Kendra Miller uh might be placed on injured reserve. However, the thing about Kendra Miller is I'll get to this a little bit later about the cut candidates thing. DA has said plenty of times that it's hard to make the team when you're injured all the time. And putting him on injured reserve would pretty much be saying, hey, you're going to be on the team once you get done. Once you get done being injured. Uh, Rashid Shahid, Dennis Allen says uh, that he believes Shahid's toe injury won't keep him out for long. I don't know when that means he'll be back, but I know he's not playing Sunday. Waga participated in 11 on 11 Thursday. He'll probably play Sunday, even though he's got a little bit of a back injury. I think he'll play just because he needs the reps, and I'm sure they might, you know, ask him of that. If not, I think it's fine either way, but he'll probably play. Uh, Mason Tempton returned to practice Thursday. I think, you see, for a long time, I thought he was going to make the roster as well. And then he got injured before uh, the Cardinals game in week one. And, you know, he was doing really good in camp. He was, you know, winning all of his one-on-ones pretty much. And then we've just yet to see him play in a game. So hopefully he plays Sunday, but I have no idea because he, he he's kind of, you know, at a last-ditch effort to make the roster, I believe. Uh, DeMarco Jackson exited Thursday's practice due to a calf injury. I don't know too much about that. Um, so I'm not going to speak too much on it. All I know is that he's really good on special teams, and that's a, a big blow for that portion of uh, the team. And since here, Hainsworth is on injured reserve after clearing waivers, which means – uh, he got cut, and uh, no one signed him, so he just went to injured reserve for us. So uh, he won't make the roster either, and I believe, yeah, he's got a knee injury, MCL sprain or something like that. So, yeah, uh, very quick rundown of the injury reports. Uh, and while we're on the idea of the uh, – the injuries and stuff like that. We're going to talk about who your surprising cut candidate should be, you know, whether it be because of injury or just because of overall performance or whatever it be. Who are your surprising I've cut got, candidates? I've got two. Okay. I wouldn't be surprised if a guy like Malik Willis doesn't make the team because I don't know how many quarterbacks they're going to want to carry into the regular season. I think the rule says you can only carry two. Because I think the rule is emergency third QB, so he would have to go to your practice squad. As, that's what I'm, yeah. But I, and, and that's like kind of the thing, too. I feel like if you put – because don't you have to cut a guy to put him on your practice squad? You have to cut him, he has to clear waivers, and you got to – I think yeah. so. I would I wouldn't imagine Malik would clear waivers is the thing. Because some team would want to use him somehow. Because like it's not a fact of how he plays. I just think the Titans have a better backup in Mason. That if something happens to Will Levis, I would feel much more comfortable with the Titans trouting out Mason instead of Malik. Like I feel like if you give Mason the Titans team that Will's going to have, if something happens to Will, there's still a decent chance you can go out and win that game. Fair. Whereas, I feel like Mike's inexperience as well as his reliance on his athletic ability more than his knowledge of, like, passing. Like, it, it seems like he's too willing to not he's too willing to not make a mistake 
Yeah, if I had to put it, if I had to put it in a way, I'd say Malik uh, Malik Willis is a watered down version of Justin Fields. He's worried to make a mistake, so he wants to keep the ball in his hands where he feels like he can control the controllable. Yeah. I'd say Malik Willis is like a watered down Justin Fields, like insane athletic ability, but like as a passer, he's not improved and, at all. And my second one's actually defense, and it's Caleb Farley, because, and it's even more on it of like insane athletic ability, but just can't stay healthy. And there's other guys on the team. Okay, so Sneed, Awuzie, uh, McCurry are going to be your starting three. Yeah. Then you've got, as your safeties, you've got Diggs Hooker. Mm-hmm. But then you got Molden and Adams who are going to be involved at some somehow. Those. So not only do you have those four, did you normally a team wouldn't? I don't know how it normally works, but I don't think a team would normally keep four safeties. So mm-hmm. then you got you got to all that. Uh, you also got to think about Brian Lee's going to stay. Yeah, because he's been impressive in training camp. Plus, the Titans spent a uh, fifth round pick on him. Was it a fifth? Got, or was it a fourth? Fifth, yeah. Right. And then you got to think, what did they? What are the Titans value? Do they value the athletic ability of of Farley? more than him actually being on the field? Or do they value a guy that may be worse than Farley when he's on the field like Trey Avery, but has the experience of being a legit NFL starter, started, didn't play well last season, but started last season, has that experience starting, could get better over time. Mm -hmm. Like, because, you you know, you're never going to get better unless you're thrown out there. And what undrafted free agent gets thrown as a NFL starting corner in their rookie year? It doesn't often happen. So when you look at his stats of what he gave up last year, what did you expect? He was a true, like a UDFA corner that was given the number one starting corner spot after some injuries last year. So, like, yeah, of course he's not going to do great. But he's done okay in preseason so far, and I think he genuinely should make the team. And then you got guys like – like Kelly and Gar, uh, and Gar, who are special teams aces, and Gar could even be a punt or kickoff return guy, that um, both of them show promise. So you like, would you rather take Farley over one of them guys when they've actually been on the field putting in, making plays, being productive? Well, Farley just, it seems like every time he's starting to climb up and finally get that opportunity, he gets hurt again. Goes through something again. And it's like, when does it start being enough for you to say this was a mistake? Yeah. I'm looking at the depth chart. Uh, the left or uh, the corners are Shadobi, or left corner is Shadobi, Trey, and Brie Caleb Farley. Right corner is Jerry Sneed, Jer- Jarvis Brownlee, and Gabe Judy Lawley. Judy and take Lawler Allen. Was who I was thinking about. Yeah, and then the nickel corners are McCurry, Eric Gar, Anthony Kendall, and then Robert Javier. So, yeah, I mean, I could see what you're saying. Somebody out of like the group of people there, somebody's gonna be the gonna have to be on the chopping block there. And yeah, we've talked about it plenty of times, like just in our circle that the best abilities. Like, like, the best ability is availability, and maybe Gar and maybe Gar and Avery right. are, are worse than Farley, but, like, at least they're on the field. Yeah, like, they they actually played the game. I've, I don't think I've – I can't remember the last time I've seen Caleb Farley in a regular season he, game. All his, like, he's only got 17 tackles. That's his career stat, 17 tackles. Damn. Doesn't got a doesn't got a pass breakup. Don't got a nothing. Seventeen tackle. That's it. So so your surprise and cut candidates are Malik Willis and Caleb Barley. Yeah. All right, that's fair. I'm gonna say my surprise and cut candidates are. 
Um, Kendrick Miller, uh, just for the fact that he was, you know, a third round draft pick last season. And, you know, you don't usually cut your third round pick after one year. Uh, Can I make that? Uh, I'm going to make a, I'm going to add another one on real quick because I just thought about it. Okay. I doubt, I doubt I see this happening, but I also mean you've talked about it a little bit. Nick Folk. Nick Folk. Is okay. Another one. Okay. Do you, do you see that as like a cut or like a trade? I, I don't know like how, I don't know like the kicking situation on some other teams and like how they fit. Like would a team even be interested in doing that? Would it even be worth it for the Titans? So. I think if you're tra- I think if you're getting rid of a kicker and you could trade him, that is already insane value. Like, because you know kickers, they come and go, but Nick Folk's one of the oldest kickers in the league, and you already know like if you're if you're sending him somewhere, you already know you're getting a reliable kicker. Yeah. Um, but my other one is going to be another uh, pick from last year. It's Isaiah Foskey. And the reason I'm going Isaiah Foskey is because he's already buried in the depth chart. Um, he's behind um, Cam Jordan, Peyton Turner, Carl Granderson, and Chase Young. And he's made very little improvements over this entire like year. So, you know, he's already facing like a, a weird, um, a weird like battle with himself being the third string, fourth, fifth string, the end already. And like he's, he just hasn't improved. And it's hard to, it's hard to see someone like him improving whenever he's not going to have like any opportunities at all, unless that unless that D line gets injured. So I could see him getting cut. Another one I'll throw in there is you know what? No, that's a that's a uh, that's the only those are the only two that I got. And Kendra Miller. Is, I said this for the last two weeks. I was talking to Caleb about it. Um, KJ Miller is always going to be on the surprise list because I just don't understand how um, you can cut him after one year. Uh, even if he's injured, you know, you'd still want to give your third round pick a chance to develop, hopefully. But I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Hopefully I'm wrong. Uh, but uh, based on what this sounds saying, I don't think so. Uh, moving on do now. Do you think Wait, it's some you? like? Do you think it's a bit of like kind of nervousness on his part about like job security? Yeah, it's a lot of things that I think. I think it's a a job security thing. It's a you know. He's trying to shake it up a little bit because he knows what he's done previous hasn't really been successful. You know, like um, 2022, he led us to 7 and 10 record. Last year, it was 9 and 8 with no playoffs. So I'm just going to assume that he's just trying to shake something up and, you know, make something work. But if that was the case, he would notice that Trevor Penning is that bad and try to bring in a right tackle. That's what um, I was going to ask. There's got to be some guys like in free agency that like could still be effective. Like, uh, what what's the tackle from the Packers that had Fox some? Young? Yeah, isn't he a free agent? Yeah, uh, either that or he's a jet. One but, Cause like I'm, that's one of the guys that a lot of people are saying, oh, he has like all these injury concerns, but like you can't tell me with a straight face he wouldn't be better than Trevor Penning. I can name thirty guys be better than Trevor Penning in free agency. But then again, it's all about do the Saints have the money to go out and get a guy like that? 
Well, also, he's at the end of his career with injury issues. I'm sure he wouldn't mind taking a little bit of a pay cut. But, um, yeah. Uh, no, he's currently an NFL think? free agent. Oh, okay. See, I, I do think that uh, it's a mentality thing and nervousness. And, yeah, he, he knows that his job's on the line. Like, that was that was the thing that they mentioned, like, back at the end of last year. So they said he was coming back. It's like he's got one more chance to do something. I don't think it's – I don't think he's going to – I don't have a lot of high hopes for him, to be honest. Like, this team – this team will always be in the game just because of how good the defense is. Fair. But if that offense cannot score points effectively or even, like, you know, m- mediocre, like at a mediocre rate, this yeah. team's not going to win. Like, like what they want to. Yeah. But hopefully I'm wrong. You know, hopefully I'm wrong. Uh. Moving on, though, uh, away from the cut candidates, do you have any breakout guys for um, for the Titans season-wise and uh, for the game this week? There's some uh, there's some guys that, like, Jalen Harrell, I've mentioned already, he comes to mind when you talk about, like, breakouts and, like, guys that could be effective. Like, I genuinely think he could be effective in the regular season for the team. Yeah. Because, and like this was a word used by uh, somebody I was scrolling through his post on Twitter, is um, when talking about Harold in the draft, how the Titans found a uh, a diamond in the seventh round. Yeah, we got a pass rusher from a Power Five conference that was really good at Michigan. And somehow he didn't go earlier in the seventh round. It doesn't like. And then he he gets added to a defensive front that's already got Travondre Sweat, got Jeff Simmons, got Harold Landry, got Arden Key. And then you could it even like having Jalen Harold is going to improve Arden Key because Arden's never been a guy in his NFL career to be a a 99% of snaps guy. He's always more effective coming in 60% of the time, 70% of the time. So having a guy that you could switch out with and he'd still be effective, because that's one of the problems with Weaver is Weaver is so much of like ineffective in pass rush is like he can get sacks it's the ability of like of when he doesn't get good like jumps or good pressures, he's just stonewalled so easily where it's like Jalen Harrell is able to use his his body to get more pressure. Even if he's not gonna get the sack, he's still providing pressure where and he's not just getting straight up stonewalled. Yeah. So that's probably my my breakout guy for this game and my breakout guy overall for the regular season for out of like training camp guys that could improve. Now if we're talking about overall guys for the team that could break out. I think a lot of people are underestimating Tony Pollard. I think he'll have a really good year this year. Okay. Yeah, I'd say for me, uh for this game. I got two different guys for game and season. For this game, I'm going to say Rico Payton. Uh, I've said this for three weeks straight now. <laughs> I'm almost uh, pretty much a Rico Payton meat writer at this point. But uh, long story short, I almost interviewed him like a few months ago. And ever since then, I've been like watching what watching him like very closely. And he's been one of the best overall defenders in the entire preseason. So uh, I think he's going to continue that this week. I like Rico Payton uh, whenever he plays, which will probably be with the the threes. And then for the season, I'm going to say A.T. Perry because uh, there's not very many people, or there's actually a lot of people, uh, who are – 
not really the best in training camp, but are able to put it, you know, put it on the stat sheet when it comes to actual games. And A.T. Perry kind of pretty much proved that he's that. And he'll be wide receiver four or three, depending on who D.A. wants to go with. I think D.A. will probably go with the experience in Cedric Wilson. Uh, But I think A.T. will be a good four. And, you know, he's going to be reliable for if anyone ever goes down. Like, for example, if Rasheed misses uh, week one, A.T. will be a good three there. So I think that A.T. is going to be good. He's a great contested catch guy, physical. You know, he's 6'5", I believe, 6'4", or something like that. Uh, yeah, 6'5", so... Big guy, physical guy. Uh, he hoed AJ Terrell, so I'll hold that over. Dawkins forever. <laughs> and uh, yeah, well, that that I sneak it in every video. That's my way of uh, shitting on the Falcons. I have a way of shitting on the Falcons in every video. So there's that. <laughs> All right, now moving on to. Uh, just the game. I think that's everything other than the score predictions. Oh, uh, is there any position battles that could be settled of uh, this 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 week? I think yeah. uh, the only one that the first one that comes to mind, and the only one that really comes to mind is I think besides that, positions are already kind of filled up. Because more to like some of the main position battles was that defensive edge spot. Was Weaver going to be the rotational guy with Key, or was it going to be um, somebody else brought in? Was it going to be Caleb Murphy? Was it going to be uh, Jalen Harrell? I think if Harrell comes out and has at least a good game, to, I think it's pretty much sure up that he's the guy, right? Mm-hmm. But guys like um, – like, uh, if you don't mind, could you go on the Titans depth chart real quick and tell me who the guy that plays tight end for the Titans that has three names is? I think his last name is Robinson. And uh, I really want to call I really I really want to say his David initial, Martin Robinson. DMR, okay. I wanted so bad to say DTR. <laughs> but that's for the Browns, right? Yeah. But it's DMR, and he's been really good in the preseason. And depend- if he comes out and plays well, I'm not talking about, like, him jumping we- Wiley or a Okonkwo or anything, but I think he'll make the team if he comes out and plays well. I think he's still, like, a guy that can make the team. But as far as, like, actual having legit ability to finish something, uh, the battle with Chestnut and Haskins has been kind of close. Realistically, I don't see them keeping both, and it looks like Haskins is going to win because of his ability. Uh, this is the way Brian, um, our special teams coach, uh, described Hassan Haskins is he's a lot. He's a running back that plays like Micah Parsons, mm-hmm. like talking about like special teams kick off and stuff like that. Okay, yeah. He's a running back that plays like Micah Parsons. Like, he's just a, a – he's that type of, like, defender, right? Like, a, when ta- like the way he goes for tackles and stuff. Okay. So, his ability I, – I think the meaning he was trying to say is he's a running back that plays like a linebacker. So, it, like, the way he plays on special teams. And when you're trying to find a guy like a running back three, a guy that can play running back but not only just play running back, he has to also be able to do something else. That's what – like, these deep positions, like wide receiver six, uh, tight end three, they've got to be able to do other stuff that shows them why they need to make the team. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Like for example, uh, like deep roster corners usually are gunners for punt team. 
Mm-hmm. So a guy like Haskins provides better special teams ability than a guy like Chestnut, who, if I'm not wrong, doesn't even play special teams. I don't know. I can tell you. So I actually think that Haskins will be the one that ends up winning the job, even though he's been worse of a rusher. I give an actual like carry to carry guy. Okay. Uh, yeah. For uh, for the Saints, I'd say QB two is probably going to be settled this game. Uh, Winston Scrabbling, Jay Kanner. I couldn't tell you who's leading that right now. Uh, the way I describe it is after the first week, I would say that Spencer Rattler was the better option for t- QB two. And then week uh, week two, after week two uh, against the 49ers, he did not do that well. But Jake Hayner also didn't do well either. So I feel like neither of them, you know, closed the gap at all. So I think this is like the final like showing, which is why I think the starting offense will probably play like very minimal. I'd say maybe two series uh, at most. And then, you know, it'll go to the Hayner Rattler show. Uh, also, I think tight end three between Dallin Holker and Michael Jacobson. Uh, one that's not really talked about uh, that should be something that's thought about is right tackle, starting right tackle. Whether that be Ali Udo or Trevor Penning, that should be a battle that should be considered. Chase Young and Carl Granderson for uh, right defensive end one. Uh, I think they're both fine. I think the rotation is going to be the same either way, but the starting guy, um, I think, should be Chase Young for right now just because of his youth. And I think that he's got a better pass rush repertoire than Granderson does. They both bring their own unique abilities, but for what the Saints need in terms of, like, uh, filling a stat that wasn't there, like, for example, our sack numbers were lower, uh, and Chase Young brings more of a a pass rush style than Granderson does, and Granderson's better in run defense. So I think the rotation is going to be – uh, depending on what you know they're lining up for. Uh, linebacker, well, no, line, not linebacker two, I'd say. Uh, Pete Warner's got that pretty locked down. Um, let's see who else? Kicker, uh, Blake Groupie and Charlie Smith. I think Charlie Smith, I think Blake Groupie's winning that right now just because of the experience and. Uh, he's gotten more reps in terms of uh, in game and in practice as well. So that's something. And I think that's it. I think, I think that's all. So yeah, that's the that's the position battle ish we got. And then finally, okay, uh, Caleb. Uh, I mentioned keys to victory, so you can answer this in one of two ways. What is the way for the Titans to win this game, or what do you have to see from the Titans to be satisfied? I want to say a I want to say a couple of drives from the offense. Like winning this game really matters. From the I want to see a couple of drives from the starting units in general. Like winning this game really doesn't matter to me as much as being a as being oh excited about leading into week one against the Bears, knowing what my offense and defense looks like. Yeah, that's I agree with that. I'm not really looking for the win. I mean, a win would be nice. So wins are always nice, but uh, for the Saints installing an entirely new offense with a new offensive coordinator. I want to see the starters play then you, a couple of drives. With the new offense and 
like knew everything, you wonder how much of it are them playing like a poker face and not wanting to show too much before week one. Yeah. But also, you know, you gotta you gotta be able to, you know, know what you're doing as well. Yeah. It's yeah, hard. It's really hard to diagnose what you're saying. There's seeing. no like there's no reps better than in game reps. Yeah. So I agree with you. I'd say uh uh starting starting uh offense and defense play a couple of honestly I don't even think I need to see the starting defense anymore. But starting offense, uh, I'd say play two drives at minimum. You know, give me something to be excited about for week one. Uh like for like I said for the last three weeks, Derek Carr, give me hope. That's a sentence I never thought I'd hear in my life, but here we are. I need Derek Carr to give me some sort of like hope for week one in the offense. I think I have a lot of hope for the creativity of the offense uh, because Taysom Hill plays fullback now and he plays fullback, running back. Like he took handoffs from uh, the running back spot. He blocked as a fullback. He played tight end and receiver. So, and yeah, he does I mean, quarterback that, things. Yeah, and quarterback and special teams. Sometimes, like, on the offensive side of the ball, I I want to see a lot of creativity with him, and I think he'll play a lot more than he ever has. Um, when did his mother at? They're kicking kicks now. Hey man, today is his birthday, so happy birthday, Taysom Hill. Or technically, what is yesterday. he? 116? 34. Oh my god. There's no way he can keep doing this. He came into the league at 27. All right, anyway, final thing now. Let me pull this up because I forgot to pull it up. Uh, and. Boom. Now, I know you're not really a betting guy, but uh, what I like to do instead of overall score predictions is I like to do uh, betting lines instead. So uh, on the screen, we got Titan Saints money line spread and total points. So the money line is Titans minus 195, and you know what money line is. It's basically just picked yeah. up. Spread, obviously, you know that too. We used to do the cards. Uh, Titans are favored by 3.5. And then the over is at 36 and a half. So, uh, what do you see happening here? Okay, me personally, um, I could see a Titans win, Saints, three and a half, and Under 36.5. Okay. So for me, uh, I'm just going to stick with the facts. This, both of the Saints games have uh, hit the under. And um, both of those games have, if you those were to be the final scores for, these, for this game, it'd still be the under. So I'm sticking with the under. Uh, I'm going Saints three and a half. And then for money line, it really just depends on who's playing. But for the sake of preseason, I'm just going to say Saints plus 165. So, yeah. Uh, that's that's all we got here. Is there anything that you'd like to promote or say to the people before we head out? Um, Titan on top. Uh, where, 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 can they, where can they find you at? Uh, they can find me at uh, Cass at YouTube. Uh, I talk about things, mainly the Titans. I also talk about other things, mainly the Titans. Um, you can also find me at United Kingdom Wrestling at YouTube.com, uh, where I am joined by, yeah, by, by, by him and other person in the universe uh so all right well all of his links will be in the description thank y'all for watching this video make sure you like and su subscribe, subscribe. favorite follow on and everything
turn on the notifications and uh if you don't uh, get that i'll be live that's an old school youtube reference out there what like subscribe favorite follow on everything nope i don't are you serious is that, is that pewdiepie no like subscribe favorite follow on everything bridget west Huh? I'll tell you when we get it. Okay. 